in the first question, it asks us to solve the simultaneous equation. So we have y equals to x squared minus 1 and x equals to 5 minus y. As we can see in the second equation, x has already been made the subject. So what we can do is we can substitute the second equation in the first one. So we'll have y equals to 5 minus y whole square minus 1, which is going to be 25 minus 10y plus y square minus 1. Combine the like terms, so y square minus 10y plus 24. Bring the y to the other side. So we have y square minus 10y minus y plus 24. So now what we do is we combine the like terms again. So we have 0 equals to y square minus 11y plus 24. We're going to factorize this quadratic equation. So we know 24 has the factors of 24 times 1. 8 times 3, 6 times 4, and 12 times 2. Since 8 plus 3 gives us 11, so we're going to replace 11y with negative 8y minus 3y. And plus 24 comes as it is. Factor by grouping. So between the first two terms, y is common, y minus 8. And between the second two terms, we have negative 3 common. Once again, y minus 8 in the bracket. So we have y minus 8 bracket y minus 3 equal to 0, which means y is 3 and y is 8. If we have the y values, which were y equals to 3 and y equals to 8, what we will do is we'll find the corresponding x values. So x is 5 minus 3, which is x equals to 2 when y is 3. And x is 5 minus 8, which is negative 3 when y is 8. In the second part, it's asking us to work out square root of 200 plus square root of 50. So whenever we have thirds and we have different numbers inside it, and those thirds are being added, our first step is to prime factorize those numbers and bring them down into its simplest form. So we know 200 is 20 times 10. 20 is 4 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. And 10 is 5 times 2. So as you can see, 200 has been split into its prime factors. So if we rewrite this, 200 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. Now for 50, you know 50 is 5 times 10 and 10 is 5 times 2. So that means 50 can be rewritten as 5 times 5 times 2. Now we can combine the 2s as 2 cube and 5 as 5 square. And in the second case, we can write it as 5 square times 2. So as you can see, 5 square is 25 and square root of 25 is 5. So this 5 comes outside. And what we can do is we can rewrite the 2 cube as 2 squared times 2. And over here, 5 comes out again. And we have 2 inside. So since 2 squared is 4 and square root of 4 is 2, so 5 times 2 outside, square root of 2 inside. And this is basically 10 root 2 plus 5 root 2, which equals to 15 root 2. That is your answer. In a sine function, your maximum value is 1 and your minimum value is negative 1. So, and your sine function always begins from 0. So, it's going to be like this. Yeah. It's 0 at 0, 180, and 360. And at x equals to 90, it's equal to 1. And at x equals to 270, it's negative 1. Next, it says solve x squared minus 2x minus 15 greater than 0. So we have a quadratic inequality. What we will do is we'll factorize this inequality as we would with an equation. So we know factors of 15 are 5 and 3 and 15 and 1. Since 5 minus 3 is 2, so we rewrite this as x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 15 greater than 0. 
factor by grouping. So between the first two terms, we have x common. And between the last two terms, we have three common. Now between x and three, we have x minus five common. So in the next bracket, we have x plus three. Now, since the inequality is greater than zero, so if we roughly sketch this, one factor is over here and the other is over here. This is our curve. So if your inequality, especially the quadratic inequality is greater than zero, that means we look at the values above the x-axis. So over here at x equals to negative three, your values of x are decreasing. So x is less than negative three over here. And at x equals to five, your values of x are increasing, which means x is greater than five at this point. So this is your answer. Look at the last question. It says find the nth term of a sequence. And the sequence is 10, 12, 16, 22, 30. So let's start with finding the common difference. So between 10 and 12, the difference is two. Between 12 and 16, the difference is four. Between 16 and 22, the difference is six and then eight. As you can see that there's no common difference, that means it's a quadratic sequence. So since it's a quadratic sequence, what we do is we find the difference of the differences. So this is gonna be two, two, and two. So let's call this the first difference. And this is your second difference. So whatever is the second difference, what we do is we divide that by two and make that the and make that the coefficient of n square. So we know two divided by two is one. So this is our n square right now. So we know that p equals to n square will not give us the same sequence because one square is one, two square is four, three square is nine, and all of that. So what we do is we make another sequence. Uh, for n square and compare that to the original one. So let's write down the first sequence as it is. And this is going to be the sequence for n square. So that's going to be 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. Now, if we subtract the two sequences, the difference is going to be 9, 8, 7, six and five. So now if you find the difference of these differences, that is negative one, which means we have a linear sequence over here. So the nth term for this sequence is going to be 10 minus n. So our total nth term for this quadratic sequence is going to be the addition of these two, the n square and 10 minus n. So that's going to be n square minus n plus 10. That is your final nth term for the given sequence.